Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 99 Days Live Coaching, right? I hope you find this, I mean, today's topic interesting is how to reconnect with your own hunger, right? So before I get that started, um, let me just start off with like some um, normal facts or, you know, um, some normal things about our grandparents' things. Um, yeah, so we all know that, you know, look at our grandparents themselves. They actually ate um, when they were hungry and stopped when they had enough. And look at my grandmother right, right now is actually at uh, in her 90s, right? So they didn't really track all the grams, the points or even exchanges or they never worry about what is gluten or GMOs. And they were blissfully unaware of the number on the scale or the little tag in our clothes itself. So that means the size of the clothes, right? And they were very clear about their needs, intuitive and satisfied with that. Okay. So before I forgot, if you are watching me live right now, do send me some likes and love and keep me motivating. Okay. And do help me to share out this. Uh, Facebook Live, if you find this uh, could be useful to the people that you love, right? Okay. So as we all know that, you know, we are actually born with the natural ability to sense how hungry we are. And eating was actually so much simpler. If you still could remember when you were a kid or you are now the parents to some of the kids, right? First, there was just one thing in the menu, which is very simple and it's either come from a breast or even a bottle that is our milk right so if you ever fed a baby you know that um you will know what i mean right you cannot overfeed a healthy baby they will eventually say no or shake their head or even move their mouth away right when they are actually full or they do not want to eat anymore but the thing is they will actually cry or give you some sign when they're actually hungry and they want to be fed. So, I mean, if let's say babies that didn't have this kind of natural instinct, right? We, would, we wouldn't we would have survived for so long in this world, okay? That is actually our natural instinct or survival instinct itself. So, however, somewhere along the line, I mean, the natural cues of our body um, becomes a little bit hard for us to read because the world teach us to eat when we are not hungry and we learn this from actually TV commercial as well, right? So example, social medias and even some of the parents or even our own parents, right? They will say things like, you can have this dessert after you finish your entire plate. Sound familiar? So as an adult, you actually continue this pattern and eventually you probably agree with someone to have lunch with this somebody. But just to be social when you were not really hungry. But anyway, you know, um, when, when we are social, we tend to just grab some of the food as well, right? So they also, and at the same time, in this um, weight loss diet or weight loss culture where and the diet itself, uh, when I mention diet, it means the weight loss diet. The weight loss diet really encourage people to ignore their hunger level, which means they tell people to just turn off their hunger and which we all know is, you know, such a recipe of a disaster itself. So let's move on to our topic of the day, reconnect with your own hunger, right? So, of course, when I mentioned the hunger itself, right? So, this is the hormone itself, ghrelin, play the most important role, uh, which is secreted from our stomach itself. So, this is actually, we also call it a hunger hormone itself. So, this hormone increase before the meal and decrease after the meal. As you can see in the chart itself, uh, early in the morning during example 8 a.m so it will increase that that is your breakfast time right so during lunch hour it will also increase because before the meal it 
it is actually a signal to send it to your brain to mention that you are actually hungry. You need food right now. Okay. So this is the important hormone uh, of our body. And how to actually lower ghrelin and reduce the hunger, right? So, I mean, for most of the people who I would like, I mean, those who would like to um, shake some pounds away or even maintain their weight, right? So that you might have this question, how to lower the ghrelin and reduce the hunger. And this will be my topic for tomorrow. And do remember to join me live tomorrow, right? So, okay. So, and today, this is one of the, I mean, the most sophisticated tool that I would like to share with you today, which is the hungerfulness scale. I I don't remember, I see, you know, uh, this, is, uh, this is not really a very common tool that being used like in Malaysia or even Singapore itself. So I would like to take this opportunity to share with you and hope you actually pick up something today, right? So are you ready for this? If you're ready for this, right, send me some love over here. So talking about hunger for your skill, right? This is a tool itself designed to help you tune in with your own body. So if you, I mean, if you're confused right now, I mean, Grace, where, where exactly is this tool itself? It is actually inside our own body. So this is a hunger fullness cues of our body itself. It's actually uh, it's our own survival instinct. Yeah. So if you look at this uh, scale itself, zero and one on the scale, it means famished. It's not hungry. Yeah? It's totally famished. And nine and ten is not full. That is overly stuffed okay and if you're talking about i mean um, when will be the right time to start eating it will be three or four on the scale itself and when exactly is the right time to stop eating that is six or seven on the scale so for your information when i first learned about this scale itself right so i was only familiar with the extremes but according to the scale itself, yes, you will need to, I mean, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, you will need to start eating uh, when you actually figure out it is three or four on the scale and you will need to stop eating when it is six or seven on the scale itself, okay? So to wrap this up, right, so it is good to eat until 70 percent full because you are more likely to enjoy your food so surprisingly in our chinese culture we also have this qifeng bao and for uh i mean western culture we're talking about 70 percent that's a six or seven on the scale right which is 70 percent full and in japan itself they are talking about harahachibami which is about 70 to 80 percent full as well so the concept is totally exactly the same okay so if you follow this your hunger fullness skill you are more likely to eat mindfully and your body will naturally crave for more nutritious options okay so last but not least i would like to give a shout out of my webinar again so this webinar will be on next friday and if you would like to know more how exactly to um the blueprint itself to actually stay fit forever maintain and be 12, 12 years younger than your chronological age and do sign up during this event itself i'm going to put up this in my comment box right so one of the thing is that um i only limit i mean i only accept about um 20 packs over here so there are not much seeds actually left up to up to date so you don't want to miss this opportunity so yeah with that say i'll see you tomorrow